Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ion and iPhone 693 again with a much larger review than I've done in a little while. The Lone Ranger flagship set, the Constitution Train Chase. Now this set is my favorite of all the Lone Ranger sets by far, not only because of the amazing minifigure quality and the pushing of the envelope further than Series 10 minifigures have by giving us amazing printing double-sided faces with new molded hats attached to the hair pieces that we haven't really seen since that Series 8 Cowgirl, but when they did that, that wasn't very good. This is where it's at. Not even to mention the train, these figures are just beautiful. The Lone Ranger and Tonto are figures that you get in quite a lot of sets, so is Silver, but Rebecca Reed, Danny Reed, Butch Cavendish, Latham Cole, and Jay Fuller are figures that you're not going to see in in very many sets at all. In fact, Latham Cole and Jay Fuller here are completely exclusive to this set. Butch Cavendish you can only get in the $70 set, the Silver Mine Shootout. These two guys you get everywhere, and these two are my... Ah, I don't want to say favorite because these two have... They provide something that these two don't and you need him because he's the main bad guy. I'm gonna stop making you guys dizzy, but these are great figures. I really wish we got an actual slingshot, but whatever. Rebecca Reed's cool. She's got, I think that's Princess Leia's hair or maybe the Prince of Persia hair from that girl, but the dress is great. She reminds me of the girl from True Grit and you just get a whole host of characters that are, if you go on the Lego website and look up lego.com slash the Lone Ranger, you'll see that these minifigures are actually uh, the main characters described on the on the front page so you do get very hooked up when you buy this set but not only just with minifigures you get a very very awesome great dynamic setup for the train here you get the engine of course 16 curved tracks and four straight tracks the tender car right there that says constitution on it that car the passenger car that you can actually blow the back out with dynamite but I'm gonna show you guys all of this afterward including that awesome water tower but first, let me give you a close-up of these minifigures. All right, so we'll start out with little Danny Reed, and he is the son of Rebecca Reed, and I think Dan Reed is the sheriff that comes in the Colby City Showdown. Here, just for kicks and giggles, we'll do father and son right next to each other. But either way, he's a cool figure on his own as just a, like a little kid. Uh, like I said before, the slingshot would have been nice if it was real and not just like a picture of a slingshot, but he's got nice back printing, he's got a nice little gray kid suit, nice little kid face, two nice little kid faces. This is an obscure reason, but I really like this minifigure because he uh, reminds me of like little Lord Voldemort from the Half-Blood Prince, like when you see him when he's a kid in the flashback with Dumbledore. He's chilling and the kid's just like, sometimes snakes talk to me, I can make things move do bad things to people. No? Alright, well, either way, he's a great figure. He's got Aragorn's hair, which makes him a boss, and his printing is very detailed. Next is his mother, the lovely Rebecca Reed, and she's a great minifigure. She's got some cool back printing there, you can see, pretty much. Uh, her hair is cool. Let me pop it off. I'm trying to split her in half. There, there's a better look at the back printing and her face, which is very worried. Uh, I'm assuming Dan Reed dies in the film, like, pretty early on. And that's how she's able to fall in love with uh, his brother, the Lone Ranger, John Reed. I don't know too much about the plot right now, though, because the film doesn't come out for like a month or two. So all I can really do is talk about the figure. And she's great. She's got a real nice necklace. She reminds me of, like, Gigi, which none of you probably know. It's like a really old film, a musical. Who knows? I, I didn't like it very much, but uh, the necklace makes me think of it because they tell Gigi that she needs to choose a guy who gives her real diamonds either way this is the Lone Ranger he's great I'm just going right into it pretty familiar to anybody who has any of the sets at all and he's got the double revolvers and I love those revolvers they're great the domino mask which is a beautiful thing you can now make your own superheroes with him I guess or the spirit or something like that and the back printing no back head obviously and the new mold for the white hat nice I like how his hats a little bit bigger than most other people's hats because in the trailer for the Lone Ranger you see, uh, I think it's Dan Reed making fun of him, saying, uh, you can find a bigger hat with a deeper voice. And uh, there's Tonto. He's got two faces, I'll show you. He's also got a crow on his head, which I really like. Let me pop that off for you, I'll show you. Uh, you can see the other props he comes with. He doesn't come with his tomahawk, which kind of sucks, because this is like the flagship set, and they kind of make it so, like, if you want his tomahawk, well, you're going to have to buy the other sets, huh? But there is Crow. I'm assuming it's dead. He also gets a shovel. 
a really nice rubbery hair piece there. I keep all these on collectible minifigure bases just because they're so iconically western and detailed that I just I, I just need to show a lot of respect for them. There's his other face, it's a lot calmer. Let's take a look at that with the crow. And trust me, he's got detailed front printing and back printing uh, underneath that. This freaking hair. I have a lot of Tonto, so I'm rough. I'm rough on Tonto. There is his back printing. It's just standard the back of somebody with a belt on backwards. And there's the front printing. A little better look at it. And the leg printing is great. You gotta respect it. Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp. What more can I say? The next minifigure is the main antagonist of the film, Butch Cavendish. And he is not exclusive to this set technically, but I'm not gonna get the other set. So he's exclusive for me. He's a great figure, and he only comes in the more, ex uh, though slightly less expensive, $70 set, Silver Mine Shootout, which is a pretty good deal. This guy reminds me of like Red Dead Redemption. He's got a little bit of back printing. The darker pistols compared to the Lone Ranger. Ooh, here. See, the bases just make life easier. The Lone Ranger's pistols are much lighter than his, if you were to put them right next to each other in a standoff, real close up. But uh, here, let me pop his hair off, and the hair is attached to the hat which is a beautiful thing. Uh, you don't see that very often at all, which makes it a novelty. But do you guys remember how Butch Cavendish had like a little beard? Well, now it's gone. He doesn't have a beard anymore. He still has the weird little uh, problem with his lip there, I guess, but he doesn't have a beard. I don't know if, he, if this is just them saving on a little bit of brown ink or they forgot to print it at Lego, if this is Lego's end, or if this is actually a reference to the movie and this is actually Lego being good and being better than I think they are at what they do because at some point the, he shaves and has to go incognito or something. I, I feel like they just didn't put a beard on this side of his face. He's got really cool blue, darker clothes, great leg printing, like I said, some back printing, but just it's just lines. Yeah, he's a great figure. Butch Cavendish is the man. Latham Cole is a man of the law who also has back printing, just a few lines that kind of buff him out, make him a little bigger. The, the guy who plays Latham Cole in The Lone Ranger is the guy who played Carmine Falcone in Batman Begins. Uh, so picture that when you look at him. Let me take his little bowler cap off so you can see his face maybe a little better. He doesn't have a back side of his face or anything. Looks like Obi-Wan in between episode three and episode four. Great little western outfit, plain little pants on there and he gets the rifle, the bandit rifle. Another little 360, Latham Cole, he's a bad guy. And the last figure, but definitely not the least, probably my absolute favorite of uh, this set next to Butch Cavendish is Jay Fuller, the captain of the, is it the Revolutionary Militia or the Civil War Militia? It's the, I think it's the Civil War Militia. Brain fart. But he's cool. He's got, that's his more, more interesting face, I think, but let me turn it around and show you the other face that he has an option of presenting him with. There it is. And it looks pretty good, pretty noble. He gets a little holder thing for his sword, which is always cool, and you can take that out, and he can hold it. How awesome. And just like Butch Cavendish, he's got the hair-hat combo. Mold and print, which is pretty cool. Great torso printing, pretty good back printing. He's all around a great figure. He goes well with the cheaper set, which I don't think I'm going to review, but I might. Uh, these cavalry soldiers. He, he's very good as their leader, so if you get this set, you're probably going to want to get one or maybe two of the cavalry builder set, because they even call it a builder. Like, they want you to build your cavalry up. But this is about Jay Fuller, and not so much about the cavalry. Probably my favorite. And the last figure, which I count as a minifigure, is Silver. Zoom out a little bit. Pan up a little bit. Zoom out a little bit more. Yeah, Silver. What's good? Silver's a great horse, comes with a little white bit that you can stick in his back if the Lone Ranger's not riding him and you don't want it to look like a weird reverse camel. Uh, the legs bend, this is the new Lord of the Rings horse. If they took the darn printing off his face of all the straps, this could be Shadowfax for Gandalf the White, but he can't be. And if you want to see the Lone Ranger riding Silver, there it is. And it even works pretty well if you mount it up and he's still chilling. Cool stuff can be done. Silver. On to the set. So as you can see we get a pretty awesome little 
train here. I don't think Lego's ever done like an Old West style, except the old Toy Story sets, but that doesn't count, does it? But uh, here, we'll start with the engine and then just move along the set, revealing, you know, the various parts of it to you. So here is the engine. It's uh, it's absolutely beautiful. I really like it a lot, and those are the least productive things I could say about it. But what I really do appreciate are that the wheels just kind of flow by themselves. Uh, you get little metal rods in between the wheels over here, which though it's not in focus, the metal rods are pretty apparent there. The whole top of the train is just a beautiful work of art. You get like a master. Uh, what's his name from Ninjago hat at the front here printed in silver and that's really awesome and then the steam engine thing is just kind of a couple of these pieces connected by like is it a yeah by like a black rod and uh, that's pretty it's pretty cool this thing is interesting if I tilt down just a little bit here I can show you guys this thing kind of wiggles around so it stays in place that's so it can kind of turn way easier with the tracks and not you know have to cut the whole train in half so you can still get this solid green piece here you get obviously on both sides the two stickers that say uh, transcontinental railroad or at least the abbreviation for them you get a little bell here that's uh, brick built which is pretty pretty awesome you can swing it around and ding -a -ling -a -ling and it's pretty cool and then you get the little bar here black lightsaber hilt wheels, there's the undercarriage, underside. This train is pretty, pretty awesome, and this light dangles. You can't really do much inside here at all, except maybe put one guy in there, but that's all you really want to do, seeing as this is the engine, and what a great engine it is. Next up is this awesome little coal car. I'm going to disconnect it. Ooh. Well, I'm going to try. I'm going to disconnect it from its brothers and sisters there. All right, I'll stop describing everything that I'm doing step by step and then I'll turn this around yeah so you get two magnets on the side here and I forgot to mention you can kinda of see it here that you get a magnet on the back of the engine uh, two magnets here two magnets on the other one two magnets on everything except the engine and you get the two stickers on the side here that say constitution on a brick uh, and it pops right off it just holds on one little thing if you got two hands you can do it quicker but stick that right back on you get a shovel on here which is pretty cool you gotta respect the shovel and the top here is full of coal I didn't do it specific to the instructions but I did you know I took the black pieces and I made a pile of coal in there as I recommend you do I don't don't do it exactly the way the instructions do it make your because they give you more studs than the instructions tell you to use so I say you just go crazy and I think the instructions imply by setting up the coal one way and then leaving a lot of extra black tiles for you to play with they're telling you hey throw some extra coal on there however you want make it your own at least with the coal and you can pop that open pretty easily and stash a minifigure or two in there you get the metal rods in the back of there as well so that that's good you can see there's a lot of metal a lot of big pieces for this set which is why you're only getting the 699 pieces for a hundred dollars it's, uh, it's good stuff ladies and gents I'm gonna stick the shovel back in there and next up is this guy. Ooh, oh, everything's attached, everything's a mess. And this is one of my favorite cars. It's pretty cool because you get like a little bucket thing here and there's some extra coal that I didn't. Let's actually, let's throw that extra coal in the tender and this barrel can be empty in case somebody needs to put stuff in it. I'm just trying to give back to my community guys, but you get a cool little unprinted green bottle which is supposed probably some alcohol uh, that one of the bad guys is drinking. And then you get one of these cool little crates here, and it's uh, absolutely full of like pirate's booty. And let me, well, there's like two gold studs, silver bar, and then two hearty nuggets of silver inside there. And I think uh, it's pretty much up to you to throw those in there, however you see fit. Right now I see that fit. Pretty fit to me. What's the best about this though is this little turning mechanism that shoots this gun. I'll give you a little 360, and uh, this thing also will give you a little 360, uh, but it's easy to turn. You get two little ladder pieces right there and on the other side, so that's cool. A little bit of realism so the minifigures can actually climb up there. 
The turning gun is absolutely my favorite thing. On the box, they picture Mr. Latham Cole over here doing it, and he can, he can, you can feign like he's doing it, like put it near his hand, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have to get his crap out of there and then just turn it yourself for any kind of cool stuff to happen. Very effective. It's got a big gun on it, a lot of silver, and booze, and yeah, very, very western. Oh, very, very western. Indeed. And the last car is this guy, who is a very solid design. Uh, this is like the most stereotypical car of the whole train, aside from the engine and the tender. I mean, this one was kind of, you know, diverging a little bit. That's probably directly from the movie. Just, a, you know, a big platform with a big gun on it or whatnot. But this one is a slidey door on both side kind of car. And it's got lights all over it, and the top doesn't come come off it's pretty battened down so that the door thing can actually happen for you and if you look inside there you can just kinda barely see there's a like a jail cell door and that's pretty cool because you can if you got tiny your hands you can get in there and you can kinda throw somebody in there and lock them in and that's pretty cool and if they get the dynamite and get the fuse going they can pop it off and uh, explode themselves off where you reveal where you revealed that this guy's been it stuck in there for what is it 5 10 15 20 20 for 28 days so 28 days later then again we don't know what denomination of time he's using so it could be 28 weeks so we don't know which 28 movie they're referring to but they are and you like I mentioned before you get the two magnets you get the metal wheels I mean the metal rod that connects the wheels you, for, for some reason you get some bright white pieces on the bottom there's the top for you very accessible for minifigures to ride on very uh, good for a hi-ho silver moment you stick silver up on there and silver is even with the Lone Ranger on it and trains going or maybe this way would be more appropriate but that's you know that's looking good. Let's get Latham Cole out of there. He doesn't. <clears throat> he doesn't really deserve any more screen time. I'm gonna be quite frank with you. This is a pretty solid train. Pretty, pretty good. Uh, the train is a very solid part of the set. It's uh, where you're gonna get most of your pieces uh, dedicated to. But a lot of the set is also the water tower. Whoa! Crazy angles. Alright, so this water tower is pretty awesome. Uh, you get another big barrel piece, like from the barrel escape for the Hobbit, so if you're a Hobbit fan, now more of your dwarves can actually escape in the barrels without having to rebuy the barrel escape set. Uh, the big barrels, forgot to mention, are actually very rare. But down below you get one of these little handy pieces, the tumbleweed, and that's not really technically supposed to go there, it's supposed to be its own little standalone thing, so that's cool. But down below you get the little dynamite plunger and a little grip spot where you're supposed to stick dynamite. But, I mean, I don't really... Oh, not in my focal length. But uh, I'm not really into that. I just, I think it's not very subtle. I guess this thing's supposed to go here to block where the dynamite is. But I think I'm rambling. You get some nice big molded pieces here for that and that. Those are great. Uh, you get the little water spout which does turn around. Oh everything fell off. Well, I quit reviewing. I'm going to I'm going to go to bed. It's a little close up of that area looking good. And the feature for this part of the set is that you're supposed to hit the plunger with your finger and then this thing breaks off. But mine doesn't really I guess my my stuff's on there too hard, but water droplet things do pour out and they're just extra Iron Man pieces for for his feet. One of those is actually an extra Iron Man piece and you only get three in the set but you might get four. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a pan across the wreckage and yeah that's a great little feature. No western town is complete without a water tower. If I just fly over the set a little bit there uh, we can see the extra tracks right there and over in some other part of my room that's much darker some extra tracks there. I mean, the point is you get a lot of you get a lot of tracks and uh, I just extends quite a long way. That's how much extra I have after, you know, setting up two displays 
one here and one over at the other table I just ran over to for no reason. You also get this really awesome rock piece uh, that kind of doesn't really stick out to you, but it is a nice little rock formation with some dynamite on it, and the dynamite does this. The dynamite is supposed to kind of explode this little area, so I'll the back. It's pretty hard to figure out. All right. Oh, there, okay, well now it's everywhere. Uh, I don't think I did the play feature right, but uh, you get rocks that uh, don't stay together if you blow them up. Ladies and gentlemen, the Constitution Train Chase set. Uh, this is a great little piece of LEGO history here because the Westerns have returned. Uh, I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited about these adorable little minifigures that are Western style. Let me zoom into those and give you a shot of those. And honestly, 699 pieces with nine great minifigures, if you include silver, for $100. Four of those minifigures being completely exclusive to that set. It's a high but understandable price, but when you get amazing minifigures like this, a lot of that track back there, the big mold pieces for the train, you know, some really great printed figures and stuff. Butch Cavendish, Latham Cole, Jay Fuller being the leader of the Army Cavalry Builder set. The only Army Builder set, the leader, is right there. There's just a lot going for this set. I'm telling you guys, you're not going to be upset if you're trying to go for the Western look. If you just got this and then the Colby City Showdown, that'd be maybe $150, and then you'd have everything you needed for a Western Showdown. Or maybe just this and the Stagecoach if you want to just go vehicles and whatnot, but... I don't know, there's there's just so much to look at with this set, so many play features. You can't really do power functions of any kind with the train, but I don't find that to be a problem. This is more of like a play feature kind of train, not like a proper display, you know, run around a CEO's office kind of train. It's, you know, it's more like, yeah, it's Western, it's a little setup, little train, great minifigures. I'm going to go ahead and rate this with 9 out of 10. Great set for any LEGO fan, just because... I really love the Western theme, and this is the hardiest, most, you know, bang for your buck set that you can get at this scale. You know, the train is great. You can obviously buy more of this train and create more cars and whatnot, but I think that this, as is, is a very playable train, very usable in stop motion, which I plan to do. I'm going to make a Western film uh, within the next couple months that you guys can see on the channel. More reviews are coming, guys. The Stagecoach Escape is the next one I'm probably gonna do. These are great minifigures. I would definitely go Lone Ranger sets if you're trying to add another, you know, if you're trying to expand your LEGO Horizons, you've only been collecting one or two things, you wanna collect something else. Western is great. I'm I own an iPhone 693. Please subscribe. Thank you if you have already. You guys are awesome. Peace.